Hey, hello everyone, it's Josh Small, the voice for Swimming Pool Science. And before we get into today's bromine video, when I was taking it, it was cold and chilly and the weather was nasty. And so there's a few important key things I forgot that I wanna to touch on here before we jump right in. One of the things is the ease of testing on bromine. If you have a DPD test kit like I do right here, uh, the bromine and chlorine test exactly the same. You'll see on my test block, CL for chlorine, BR for bromine right there. That tests that same color, the same exact way. Five drops of number one, five drops of number two. Give it a swirl, and it's gonna give you that same color range. And the sanitizer range is the exact same. Two to four parts per million for chlorine. It's also two to four parts per million for bromine. Now, one thing to remember is on bromines, the way the test works out is this only tells me the total amount of bromines in the water. So that's gonna include combined bromines and free bromines, bromamines and hyperbromous acid. Not a big deal, as we talked about in the video, bromamines, the byproduct of bromines reacting with organic matter, are still very effective sanitizers. I also wanna to touch on the condition of the water. This hot tub, we filled it with well water. That's all we have on the property. I could have gone down to the river and wheelbarrowed water in, but we used well water because that's the source for this particular property. I did put a good pre-filter on and I'm glad I did. Now, when I first started filling it up and I went to look at it after it was topped off, I was a little disappointed. The water was still very brown. But once we let it run for a little bit, we got our water chemistry balanced. This thing came out crystal clear and you get to see a picture of that in the video. Hello everybody, it's Josh Small, the voice for Swimming Pool Science. It's 35 degrees out. It's the week of Thanksgiving, 2021. Yes, my nose is running. And I'm here along the Dolores River working on this Coleman hot tub. Now, we just cleaned it out, and all I have to fill it with is well water. Well, that water, not the clearest, even with a pre-filter on there. So I've got some work to do on that, but what I wanted to talk to you guys about today is bromine, and the pros and cons of bromine, when we use it, when it's better to use chlorine, and how does bromine interact with chlorine? Well, a couple cool things about bromine is unlike chlorine is when bromine has reacted with nitrogen rich things like sweat, urine, all that kind of stuff. Um, it uh, doesn't do what chlorine does. It doesn't turn into this noxious, odorous, toxic, gross stuff that we want to get rid of. That's a useless form of chlorine and makes things gross. It doesn't form uh, the same things that chloramine, or doesn't do the same things that chloramines do. Um, what bromamines do is they continue to remain as an effective sanitizer in the pool. So it's almost like it's almost like the chlor the bromine shifts into second gear after it's reacted, and it doesn't. Um, it continues to work really well. Now you can oxidize this back into hyperbromous acid. That's what bromine turns into when we dissolve it into water. Um, and that hyperbromous acid is very cool because unlike chlorine, it's very effective over a wide pH range, uh, unlike chlorine. At an 8.0 pH, chlorine is only about 25% effective, whereas hyperbromous acid is still 85% effective as a sanitizer. Now, the thing is, is it's way more expensive than chlorine, which is why um, it's still cost effective to use it in a hot tub like this as opposed to trying to use it in a pool. Um, one of the big drawbacks, or another big drawback about bromine is that um, there is no known way to stabilize this, right? So an outdoor pool, you would stabilize the, stabilize the water to stabilize the chlorine. Um, the UV light will degrade this, not as quickly as it'll degrade unstabilized chlorine, but significantly quicker than it will degrade stabilized chlorine. So it's a terrible choice, being that it's expensive and there's no stabilizer, to use in an outdoor pool. Um, so that's why it works good for a hot tub like this where it's all, it's got a cover on it. It's gonna be all sealed up. Um, so again, it works over a wide range of pHs. Um, it continues to work even as a combined bromine, bromamines, uh, they work really well. Uh, and it doesn't have the same odors as chlorine. So the bromamines, God, my hand, this hand is now frozen. The bromamines are, um, um, they're not odorous, they're not noxious like chloramines are. So uh, it works really, really well. Now, one of the things we have to watch out for is bro bromine tends to be, um, it tends to generally have a very low pH. This stuff has right around about 3.2. So in my uh, oversized floater here, I have, a, I have a floater for 
uh, three inch tabs here that just have some of my one inch pro meters tabs in. Um, it's going to tend to eat away at your alkalinity and lower that pH and on a hot tub like this um, that can eventually cause damage. So we got to watch that alkalinity. Uh, the source water I'm using has an alkalinity of uh, just over 200 parts per million. Um, the pH is oh well over an 8 so I've actually had to um, actually get my muriatic acid that I got at the hardware store here because our pool uh, resources up here in Dolores aren't quite what they are in Phoenix. Um, and then of course I've got my bicarb here so I can use I can use these two items to kind of manage my um, alkalinity and pH in this top tub. So as as the uh, as the first few days go go on as we refill this, I'm going to watch this thing closely and just make sure that pH is kind of in range. Uh, I'm not going to run it as low as a 7.5 in like I would in a swimming pool. I'm going to run a little higher cuz cuz when when the owner gets into this thing and uses it, uh, that's going to lower the pH a little bit. Um, so that's going to kind of keep it in a balanced range. I'll, within reason, um, not have to worry if I'm a little bit over the top on my on my my saturation index. Now I do have to worry about the heating element because there's copper in there and that can get damaged. I don't want my saturation index to drop too low. Um, so again, I'm kind of watching that, but I don't have to sit there and fine tune it just to the nth degree. Um, I'll sit there and chase that all day and all night if I, if, if I, if I wanted to. So um, pretty cool stuff. Bromine, great for indoor pools, great for uh, hot tubs, especially ones with covers on them. Uh, if you do have a pool spot combo, uh, not going not gonna to really work. One of the other things uh, to mention about bromine is that if you do need to oxidize, because bromine isn't a very strong oxidizer, it does oxidize a little bit, but not like chlorine, um, you may need to add an oxidizer like potassium monoposulfate, and um, that, will re that will give you some additional oxidation to help oxidize some organic compounds. Um, chlorine will also work. Um, the old saying goes, once a bromine pool, always a bromine pool. And, and with that, what we're talking about is that free chlorine will always sacrifice itself to oxidize and, and turn bromamines back into hyperbromous acid before it will work as a chlorine pool. So if I ever wanted to say, you know what, we're done with bromine on this hot tub, I can't just stop using bromine and put in put in chlorine because that bromine is already in the water. It's going to stay in there and that chlorine, um, that bromine is going to stop that chlorine from doing what I want it to do and it will never, never work right. I would have to physically drain this thing down and start over with chlorine. Um, so that's something to consider. Once a bromine pool, always a always a bromine pool unless we drain and start fresh with chlorine so guys just a few little things here my hands are shaking because i'm super cold because um my feet are wet and i'm still in flip-flops because um you know now that i'm up here in colorado more um i still have too much of my arizona in me and so it's cold and my hands are freezing but it's beautiful out gonna be really white here soon all right guys thanks for watching don't forget like share and subscribe we will see you on the next one Miles, it was really fun taking you on a wheelbarrow ride, but I'm done. I'll see you later, buddy. No, you're not. No, Bye. Come on, Willow. Let's get in the truck and go home. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. See you later, Miles. Have fun. Enjoy the river. Bye. Bye. See ya. You ready to go home, Fluffy? Back to the truck.